There, there are some really awesome band directors that nobody knows of because they're in their own little neck of the woods and they're burning the house down and doing a great job. If your program is strong, if you're doing the best you can, that's success. If you have kids loving music, that's success. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> All right. So this is official our third episode, episode number three. And uh, time is a charm. say it again. Third time is a charm. Yes, yes. Uh, we have learned tremendously from our first two, three with the pilot. So uh, uh, don't know how long tonight's will be. Uh, we w- do really want to uh, have some guests come on, and we don't have to know you. If you feel that you have something to give to rural band directors uh, across the nation, then you know, please come on and let us know your situation and your story, where you're from, uh, what you got going on, and uh, and things like that. So we would love to have you, Tony. Won't you give them the information where to get it at yeah if you want to join us um you there's two ways to do it you can dm us on the rural band director facebook page or you can send an email to the rural band director at gmail.com which will be posted at the end of the of the podcast as well right and so episode two the all the right questions. That was the name of that episode. Um, we would love to have all of our guests answer all those questions, and then we'll talk about things from there. Um, we've got some guests in mind, and we've got some get uh, some uh, topics that we know we want to talk about with those certain guests. But after you answer those questions, it's it's free reign. Let's you know if you need to vent vent. If you need to rant, rant. If you need to get on a soapbox, get on your soapbox. We're gonna gonna be the ears for you, and we'll probably be going right on, sister, right on, brother. We're right there with you. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk a little bit about what our classrooms look like uh, and what they have looked like, and different things and and stuff like that. So. Uh, Tony, uh, let's say it's a typical Thursday afternoon in your advanced band, seven, eighth grade band, whatever your top band is. What's your what's your classroom look like, or what's the the process? Like the the process for a standard class? Yeah. What What do you go through? What What's how much time okay. do you spend on this? What do you do? Okay. Uh, well, my classes are roughly 45 minutes. Um, and the great thing about Avery Trace is we don't have bells. So there's not a concrete start time. So I'm, I'm having to hurry the kids along. But something that they are taught from day one, you know, is they get their instruments out, they get their binders out, they get everything they need for class, and they sit down. Um, I don't let them have their uh instrument cases in the arcs um and that's that stems from beginning band because i like to go go in all the arcs and check things you know and i can't do that if there's a bunch of cases in the way now when you say arcs you have a tiered band hall right you're you've got different tiers levels yeah yeah uh my school was built in the or my portion of the school was built in the 60s and we have concrete tiered sets in our in the band room uh they are covered in carpet but there's there's nothing we can do about them um so it's 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 roughly an arc but they're they're more like a a parentheses um but we will we'll get set up i start every class off with a little bit of solfege just basic you know all within an octave Um, and I, I, uh, pulled the trigger on a harmony director. So I do stuff with the harmony director while they're, while they're singing. Um, and the older classes sing with a drone. 
So they don't, I'll, I'll give them the melody and then they have to sing the, um, the melody with a drone. So they have to match all those intervals. Um, and then we go to rhythm charts um, and I do rhythm charts all the way up through eighth grade. I just bounce around and um, um, if you if you didn't hear the earlier episodes, I use the teaching rhythm logically by Darcy Vaught Williams. And there's, I don't know, it's like 30 pages of rhythm charts. So I, I bounce around between all of those. And then um, for my seventh and eighth grade classes, we use the uh, Yellow Habits book, the Habits for a successful middle school musician or whatever it's called. Um, and I'll usually do a long tones exercise, a uh, some kind of technique and the technique stems from whatever I'm planning on working on for the for the class period. So if we're working on a piece that's in the key of E flat, all of my technique is gonna revolve around E flat. Um, if it's E flat and B flat, I'll do a little bit of both of those just so they, they kind of get used to that. Um, and then we'll do some kind of sight reading. Uh, that book has, I don't know, it's 60 different rhythm vocabularies, and I've got a checklist of what what I want all of my grades to have accomplished by the end of the year. Um, actually, before we do the rhythm vocabulary, there's also lip slurs that we do. Um, the brass do lip slurs, and the woodwinds do some kind of chromatic stuff. Um, and then I have tried to incorporate a chorale. It's challenging for me to do a chorale because some of my classes only have like eight kids and half of them are, are you know, low brass and I have one flute and a trumpet. It's it's challenging to do a a chorale with, with that kind of instrumentation. Um, and then from that, uh, depending on how that, that portion goes, I will do some kind of scale thing um, I try to have my sixth graders learn four scales, my seventh graders learn four more, my eighth graders learn the last four. So going into high school, theoretically, they know all 12 major scales. Um, and then we get into whatever piece we're working on. So it's usually about 40, 40% fundamentals, 60% literature. Right. Okay, cool. Um, that's, is that what you're looking for? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So that's uh, <laughs> mine set up kind of the same way. Uh, I do have bells. So as the, the kids have three minutes to get from class to class, uh, three minutes is barely enough time for some of them to get into the room. So I set a timer. I've got a three three minute timer. Uh, on the board that I have to be at the door watching and monitoring. So when the bell rings, one of my little flute players will go up, touch the screen and start the timer. And they know they've got three minutes. And during that three minutes, I'm taking attendance and, and things like that. Uh, passing out music to the percussionist for the fifth time uh, because they've lost theirs or the third clarinet part got stolen. Uh, so, or given reads or whatever. So I, I got that three minutes to do that. After that, we always start with breathing um, and we use just breathing exercises and it's very simple. Uh, we do a lot of breathing gym stuff early on in the beginning of the year to, to get everything going. But by this point in the year, we're pretty much, you know, in for four, out for four, in for four, out for eight, you know, just doing, doing a few little things. And, what I've found, I always start with breathing because I've found that on the days that I don't start breathing, they are not centered. Rehearsals are horrible. They don't, they're just not focused. So that, that breathing I turned on again, I got the harmony director as well this year. Um, still, we need to have an episode and bring somebody on to just bring some people on to just talk harmony director how do we use harmony director because it, it's still new to me uh but i'll put the metronome on and then we'll do our breathing and that centers and get them going uh, keep the metronome and we'll do the the remington uh things do some remington exercises lip slurs uh 
usually I have a rhythm of the day on the board and, you know, that we'll take turn or take, I'll take volunteers to, to count it. Um, and we'll play it as a, count it as a group, play it as a group on a concert F. Um, after that, then I break out the handy dandy, Randy standy, whatever, uh, that free warm up that he's got. Um, it's got those lip slurs on it too, but it's also got uh, some dynamic exercises and we work on uh, just real quick, working on our, our dynamic levels and, and trying to extend our dynamic range. It's got an articulation study and we'll run through that. Uh, it does have a corral, but I've found another, uh, a different corral that I like to use. Uh, let's see, it's got scale studies, so we'll work on a certain pick a scale and work on the scale and the scale studies from the, the handy dandy randy stuff. Um, by then, we'll do some tuning and then uh, work on a few p few one or two uh numbers out of the book and we're using our the green habits book at the beginning uh for beginning band uh let's see introduce whatever new concept that the book wants to or that i want to use from the book and then the rest of the time again is spent on um uh, prepare uh prepare music uh concert or concert rep um, and again, we're, we're about roughly 45 minutes. So again, and it's, uh, we try to get kind of the same thing, 60, 40, 40% warm up, uh, things like that. And then 60%, uh, um, concert prep. So that, that's what I'm doing currently. Now, both of us have taught high school. How would your high school run? And we're, you know, we're going to have, and I, I hope we have listeners who are high school and, and things like that. So uh, both of us have high school experience. What was, what was your high school uh, band classes like? What, what did you, how did you have it formatted? Um, when I taught high school, I actually had block scheduling. Um, so I spent, it was probably about the same percentage. I spent a ton of time on fundamentals. Yeah. Um, partially because the, the high school that I worked at, uh, once I figured out it was, um, basically a middle school band housed in a high school, um, that really changed how everything, everything went and everything was set up. Um, but yeah, still had to hammer a lot of fundamentals and, um, uh, and then, you know, the fundamentals were always linked to whatever we were working on in the in the literature for that day. Um, at the high, at Cookville High School, the uh, the fundamental block is a lot shorter. Um, he uses the, the lip benders. I think it's, did uh, James Kernow do those? Kramer, um, it? Was it Kramer? Okay. Um, and he picks a couple things out of that and moves on from that. Um, so every, everybody has their own style. Um, but I, I hold, I hold to that 40% fundamental 60% concert stuff, uh, right up to the concert. Anytime I mess with that, and I don't know if it's a middle school thing, it's just, it doesn't seem to go as well. So right. if, it, if it's the day of the concert and we're on stage, we're still doing 40% fundamentals, 60%, you know, music. Yeah. Uh, about the only thing I would take away the week of maybe two weeks prior are the two new things uh, out of the book, two lines or so out of the book. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not going to introduce anything brand new. I'm just going to reinforce what we're doing. So, you know, yeah. we're doing, uh, you know, still doing all this other thing. So, yeah. Uh, uh, and, so um, up until, yeah. Um going back to the fundamentals time, I'm, I need to, I need to keep breathing in my fundamentals. 
Um, I always add it in and then we have like a snowmageddon episode and we come back and I forget to keep it in there. Um, but I, I started doing box breathing. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's, it's like a Navy SEAL tactic, but it's like in for so many and then you hold for so many and then it's out for so many and then you hold for so many. So you just, it's, uh, it's almost yeah. equally a calming and focus thing, you know, right. and right. Uh, whenever I'm going out with breathing, I always have them sizzle because I can hear that better and they have a little bit of resistance yeah. on it. Yeah, that's we're on the on the out. We're yeah, we're hissing on the way out. Um, now I've done the um, breathe in for or take in a deep breath, hold it, sip. Yeah, move around a little bit. Yeah, sip. <laughs> now just out, you know, just that, yeah. and you know, I've done the the paper airplane. The dart mm-hmm. and the bow and arrow, the kid, they look really like that. And the bow and arrow. the every- beginning, yeah. we'll do, huh? I was saying. Yeah. And at the at beginning, they love the, we'll have competition, see who can, you know, after the regular breathing, then we'll, you know, add, add, everybody stand up, uh, take it and pull, breathe in for four. Let's see who can go the longest when you're out of air, sit down. Uh, just something fun for them to do um but then we will do you know depending on different things at some point i will have them come up and you know it takes some time but we can get through pretty quick uh, come up and hold a piece of paper up on the wall uh mm-hmm. with the air trying to do that little trick to get the pinpoint uh because they're, they're, it takes them a while to get that concept of of small stream of air, but very fast stream of air. So yeah. it takes them a little while to get that. And that the paper trick helps that. Uh, and uh, so, uh, but going back, my, my my high school was basically I was taught on taught on block, and I've taught on a 40 minute, 40 minute day, uh, 40 minute day is quick, quick, quick. Uh, now I would give them three to four minutes, a timer again to get your stuff out, ready to go. And while I take attendance, then, uh, you know, we'll do a corral. I love the, uh, what is it? 66 box corrals, uh, or 66 corrals or, mm-hmm. And then there's Bach and Beyond or something like that. That's got a bunch of different. There, there's a ton of corrals out there. Uh, you got to have. You got to yeah. do a corral every day. You got to. And then uh, the 101 Rhythms, that book. Uh, we would do uh, an exercise out of that, or I would put that up a rhythm of the day and analyze it and talk about it. Uh, go over our uh, counting system, whatever it is. And if you do not have a counting system, get one. Mm-hmm. It, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter probably to Tony. Uh, you know, I know he loves the, the, uh, counting ry- uh, rhythm logically, the counting rhythm logically, uh, Darcy teaching rhythm, logically. uh, Keeping rhythm logically. I just haven't checked that book out yet. Uh, I've heard a lot of great things about it. That may be something that I look at this summer. Um, but uh, whatever you do, and some of you like the Takadimi, uh, some of you use numbers. I use numbers. I use numbers. Um, but we break down the beats and understand how the beats can be broken down because. You know, in all honesty, there's only a certain number of ways that a beat can be broken down. And as long as you know how yeah. the beat it can't be subdivided, you can figure out any rhythm. Um, so that's, we always spend some time rhythm there or with rhythm. Um, and then some technique stuff um, at the high school level. 
our high school currently is using the highest level book of the habits book. That next, yeah, the superior habits of a high um, school musician or something like that. Yeah, I, I think it's yeah, <laughs> successful habits of a high school musician or something like yeah. that. It's like a bluish oh, yeah, cover. And red. Yeah, I, she's using that over yeah. there. I really like that book, and I, you know, we're we're gonna keep be a habit school system. Uh, next year, I'm gonna add the yellow book to our. Uh, advanced band and then that way they're familiar with it when they get over to the high school uh yeah and then do a lot of uh yeah a lot of sight reading and we would do at the high school level we would do whole pieces at least one or two a day mm -hmm. uh, and go through our system for that uh i do we do sight reading at the middle school uh but it's on a shorter level i'm usually out of the book uh a line or two out of the book uh yeah. i will every once in a while give them a full piece uh our concert festival that we go to there is no sight reading so we're never judged on sight reading i just want them to be able to sight read uh, so we go through our whole system and i use the going back to essential elements i use the star system you know signatures tempo time signature accidentals rhythms and any other signs or symbols. So that's that's what we use. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, on the on the block schedule, we were able to do a lot of of repertoire and a lot of sight reading. We did a lot of sight reading on the block schedule. So mm -hmm. um, oh, let's see. We were, if uh, if you have not, or if you're thinking of using the middle school or high school or the yellow middle school book or the high school. Uh, habits book they are not set up like a usual method book so it's definitely something right. that you want to look at the the conductor's book for a while and kind of get a feel for it and there's some intro pages on on how to how to set it up and it even gives you if your class is 45 minutes here's how you use this if it's an hour and a half here's how you use it um but yeah it's it's definitely not a linear method book you, you, you and we are we we are not being we're not being paid to promote the yeah. book. It just <laughs> happens to be what we use. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I did uh, have seen. Is it Peter Boonshaft's got a new Sound Innovations or not Sound Innovation? I think uh, it's Peter Boonshaft. Boonshaft does do the sound innovations and they have all kinds of great resources too. They've got some fantastic resources. I just decided to use the habits book, but you know, we were at uh, uh, TMA, TMEA convention a couple of years ago with uh, Mr. Boonshaft and he was showing everything that he had. Uh, uh, many different books. Uh, you know, that, that's again, that's probably going to be a topic that we may discuss is method books because uh, mm -hmm. there's a ton out there and yeah. we'd love to get people's different different people's opinions and you know that may be a we may put a poll out on on facebook and say hey what's your uh preferred uh method book what are you using maybe we can get three or four people on here that use different things and discuss yeah stuff uh the only drawback that i noticed in the habits green book this year was it spent and i can supplement and you can supplement anybody can supplement but it spent all of the first 16 17 exercises on going through those five notes as pretty either repetitive or it just moves stepwise, things like that. And then, bam, all of a sudden you get the first song. Yeah. And with rests and things like that. And the mine, maybe, and I'll take the blame for it, but mine had trouble. It took them a lot longer getting that first song than it did all those other exercises. So they kind of, we moving, 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 and then 
bam, hit a wall right there. So uh, I would have to look back at the book again to see. But I, I did notice that, that going from exercise, exercise, exercise to a melody, the kids struggle just right off the bat. Uh, now, after that, you know, we, we moved pretty quick and, and did a pretty good job. But uh, but they, they struggled on that. How about yours? Did you notice that? Um, I did not, but I, I, I move around a lot. Uh, 17, line 17 is kind of like my, here's where we need to be, you know, um, to kind of line back up with the book. But I actually start with like line eight. Um, yeah. I enjoy starting on a concert D. That's probably too. a controversial topic. Um, I like learning concert D, then C, yeah. then B flat, then go catch E flat and F. And That's what I did. The, yeah. the habits books are kind of laid out to where you can still kind of follow that progression. Because um, it kind of, like you were saying, it chunks, you know, these two notes and then these three notes. And then it gives you a different note. And then it chunks with, you know. Um, but I, I bounced around so much. I didn't, they, they may have hit a wall and I just didn't see it because we were bouncing around so much. Right. Yeah, I, I love starting with concert D first. Um, that's my that's my first go to note. It's not the the reason being the brass. Well, the brass. <laughs> that, that, yes. Yeah. You know, that's that's why we start or that's why I like starting on that note. Plus, and, and a lot of people that are against that are brass players. They're like, you need an open pipe. And I'm like, it mm, doesn't matter. Yep. It's, it's right in the middle. <laughs> well, sometimes they can't hit an F. And sometimes they can't hit a B flat. You right. know, and it's right in the middle. Yeah. And and the other reason I do that is that that's the very first note. And then the next note I teach them is concert E flat. Why? Okay. Because we play Jaws. That's our first song. Ba -da, okay. da -da. That that's our very first song, and they're, you know, those two notes, okay. um, two note song. Then we start working our way down so that we're making it to hot cross buns. Mm -hmm. uh, we will rock you, you know, things like that. So, do you start day one out of the book, or do you go by rope? Um. I actually don't get into the book. Well, we start school like July 29th. We start so early here. Um, we didn't get into the book until probably mid-September. Oh, so okay. I do, it, it's kind of rote. I'll teach them their first note, which is that concert D. Um, and then I tell them that's note three. And they're like, but it's the first note we yep. learned. It's okay. It's note three. Just go with me. Yep. Um, and we'll kind of do songs three, two, one you know, just so they, they build that, that fluency. And then when we get to the book, then, okay, that's what that note looks like. Yeah. Um, and actually, you know what it look, you know what it feels like, you know what it sounds like. Yep. And here's what it looks like. What's the, what's the old right. adage signs before symbols or something or uh, yeah. sound before symbols. Well, you talk before you read. So, <clears throat> so. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you're listening to this and you absolutely disagree with how we're doing that, that's okay. Come <laughs> talk with us. Hey, I mean, but, it's yeah. to reach his own, There's everybody in that time. I would, I would love to discuss it. Yeah. I would love to discuss it. Um, that's just, that's how I do it. So, but yeah. I I'm, would be totally open to a discussion with that. Yeah. And, and you have to find what works for your group. I mean, yeah. I, I followed what my college professors said for a while, and it just wasn't working. There's nothing against the college professors. It just, it, it wasn't working. So I started to modify it and started started catching some ground. And it's the things you learn over the years of teaching. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, that's what our classrooms look like. Um, that's the way we run our classes. Uh, we would, again, love to talk with you guys about how you run your classes, and we'd love, you know, whether you're 
beginning band, middle school, high school? Uh, how do you run it. your band classes? You know, and does it really matter? Because I was thinking about this. Does it really matter how we run our band class as to whether we're a rural band director or not? Now, me personally, I do have to go back and teach a few little things because my kids coming into me know nothing. They've not had any music whatsoever. Uh, if they've had music, it's because mom and dad made them take piano lessons. But we have no elementary music in any of our elementary schools. So day one, when they come in, they know, you know, they, they know nothing. So I do have to take that into consideration. Um, and I've taught where, where they have had some, and it has helped because I'm, you know, I've had kids come in who can already read music. Uh, mm -hmm. But in my current situation, there, there's none so they don't know how to read music they you know don't know anything about about music they barely know what instrument what the instruments are you know they're calling instruments i want to play the saxophone uh oh you mean the black long black clarinet thing you know the woodwind yeah that the, that the squidward the squidward thing yeah i want to play the squidward thing yeah so i mean you know that does you, you that that's my biggest thing is that that's the biggest thing that informs uh or in, gears my instruction okay fortunately so Tony's for me, over there you know he's he's got all his kids can read music and play instruments and everything before they get to him yeah absolutely <laughs> um fortunately we do have elementary education here and we've got some awesome awesome teachers here um so they they have a a kind of foundational knowledge um it's yeah. just applying it to their to their instrument so in that aspect i've i've, I've got a leg up with yeah with that, that does help yeah that yeah. does help and i've been in a situation where i was all of it i was pre-k through eight general music beginning band high school you know and oh that was the hardest job yeah <laughs> oh my gosh 30 minutes a day general music pre-k through eighth grade Bless general you. Or band and then high school one class of high school band um uh, that was oh yeah that was the hardest and those of you who are doing it, oh, you you have my sympathy. Yeah, I just yeah. my heart goes out to you. Keep fighting the good fight. That was not for me. Yep. And you know, I, I was there for a few years, uh, and then I moved on. So you know, it, it it wasn't for me. If it is for you, go for it. I, Rock I'm, it. Yeah. Uh, you're rocking it. I'm proud of you. But if not, I, I understand. That was the one of the, that was the hardest job I ever had. So many kids, so many lessons, so many classes. I mean, it's a lot it of was, prep work. well, yeah, it's a lot of prep work. Now it is very rewarding, but it's a lot of pressure because you're the only one. Yeah. No teamwork, no nothing. You're the only one. Yeah. And that that there's some pressure there. If it doesn't go good, yeah, it's, it's your, your fault. fault. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not quite not quite to that extent, but my my first job, um, I had to go between three K schools, a middle school, and a high school every day, and yeah. there was no plan period. Cause they were like, well, your, your travel time is your plan period. It's like, can't copy music when you're on the road. You can't yeah. put in grades when you're on the road. Been there, done that. Did yeah. that gig for seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, service five different elementary schools or K-8 schools. Uh, and one or two band classes in each school. We met each other 
met with, with the kids two to th- sometimes two or two at least two two to three times a week uh, mm-hmm. sometimes in the cafeteria sometimes in a locker room sometimes in uh, uh, a trailer out back you know sometimes yeah. in a math room that was my band room was a math room uh, on, on stage in the gym yep while gym class is going on I had not that I didn't have to do that yeah I've not done that I feel Come on, guys, that. find the beat and do 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 going on behind you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, yeah. All going. <laughs> and some of you guys are in that situation right now. Yeah. And hey, I I feel you. I feel your pain. Yeah. We've been there. And some of you guys are making it work and rocking out. And if y'all, if so, let's let's talk about it. I want to what. How do you cope? How do you work it? Yeah. What your What are your tricks? Because what I was so, doing did not work, which is why I'm still not doing it. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I understand. So, uh, you yeah, know, look, we want to talk to as many people as we can. We want to give credit where credit's due. If you're rocking it and killing it, even if you don't think you are, you are. We want to talk to you. I don't care what you teach you know uh now if you teach we you know we're we're band directors now you general music people oh god bless you god bless you i've done it cannot do it do not want to do it uh would do it if i don't know i started <laughs> saying would do it if i absolutely had to but i uh, <sighs> yeah general music people man they're heroes. I, I can't do it. I, I've done it and can't do it again. Yeah. I'm too old. <laughs> I too would like old. to see you sing a falsetto voice, though. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. You do not want to hear my falsetto. <laughs> yeah. I just, no, I, I'm too old for 32 kindergartners. Nope. And again, if if you want to, if you want to be on this podcast, you can reach out to us on the Rural Band Director Facebook page, as well as the Rural Band Director at Gmail dot com. Yes, it, please uh, do. We we want to hear from you. Send us an email. You know, let get, let us know uh, uh, what you're thinking, where your situation is, what you, you know. Do you want to get in here and? And rant, we know what's going on in Kentucky and we know what's going on in Tennessee. Um, but we don't know all parts of Kentucky. We don't know all parts of Tennessee. And good Lord, we don't know what's going on in Alabama. We don't know what's going on in North Carolina or Kansas or Nebraska. What's going on in your neck of the woods? What are some things, you know, we may find that it's a small world and we all have the exact same things. I doubt it, but you know, let's, let's talk about it. Um, let, let's figure out, uh, some things, but mainly we just want you to know that, you know, you're not alone and wherever you are, you are killing it. We hope that this is, we are winding down a, a good school year. Uh, mine has been successful and we'll, we'll talk about that later, but, uh, we hope yours is going well as so far. And if you're in Tennessee, TCAP is just around the corner. So good luck with all that. Have fun. Yay, TCAP. Yeah. If we got your band program like mine, you don't see your band kids for two weeks, really. Yeah. You do, but for like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've got K prep the last two weeks of school. So uh by then we've got all of our we got all our things done, except for graduation. We're gonna play at eighth grade graduation. They've never done that before. So we're going to try it. We'll see. A lot of pomp and circumstance. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to try the Star Spangled Banner and pomp circumstance. There you go. Uh, so, all right. I guess that this will wrap up this episode. Tony, good to see you again. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, again, talk to us. Let us know what's going on. Find us on YouTube. Find us on Spotify. And, uh, well, I mean, if you found us, you know where to get us. So, you know. Yeah. But contact <laughs> us. 
Rural yeah, Band Director, gmail.com. Rural Band Director on Facebook. Message us. Talk to us. Bye. Until next time. Bye. <laughs>